Hey everyone, it's Tara with the Painted Cicada. How are you? Welcome to my demo day. I am so glad you're here. Um, it's been a little while. Oh, there's my notification that I'm going live. Um, it's been a little while since I've done a demo, so I'm super excited to do this with you guys. Um, what I'm doing today, uh, I'm starting a month of watercolor in June, and I'm super excited about it. And I thought, um, you know, watercolor is not for everybody, or maybe people are uh, not used to it or scared to try it. So um, I'm going to do a little demo today. I'm going to make a margarita glass, and I'm going to do it both with watercolor, and then I'm going to do it with some acrylics as well. So um I thought that would be a fun way to try both. Um, what you're going to need regardless is some watercolor paper. Um, so I've got that. Mixed media paper will work as well. It's just not going to uh, be quite as absorbent and that might affect the way that the watercolors and the acrylic paint react. Um, but anyway, uh, you're going to want some paint brushes. I'm running a little behind today because I thought I was ready to go. And then I realized my paint water was dirty and all kinds of stuff. So pardon me while I reorganize my mess here. And there's my dog. I forgot to shut my bedroom door. Um, of course, he's quiet all day until I go live. But this is him protecting me from absolutely nothing right now. Uh, he's a sweetie, but uh, he likes to bark. Thomas, come here. Come here. Stop barking. All right. Um, let me see. I've got so much going on. Um, if you uh, are interested in watercolor, let me share with you. I do have a watercolor giveaway going on right now. Let me find the link. I'm going to go ahead and post that link so that if you want to enter the giveaway and uh, maybe get some free watercolor, you can try that out. So I am going to post that. Give me just a moment. In the comments. Watercolor giveaway. All right. So if you're interested in entering that giveaway, there is the link for that. Um, now I can close that. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Let's get started, right? Um, what I'm going to do first is just with a pencil, um, I am going to lightly sketch uh, a margarita glass. And I've actually got a reference here. Um, me to look at. Uh, but I'm not going for perfection. We're just going to have some fun today. So um, I'm going to start with the stem of the glass. And I'm going to make my lines a little uh, darker so that uh, you can see on camera. But when you are working with watercolor, watercolor is fairly light and fairly transparent. So you're going to want to go nice and light. Um, so I'm going to find the middle of my page and I'm going to create the stem of the glass. And so we just want a nice thin stem and then of course at the bottom it's going to have this little you know the part that stands on the table the base, if you will. Remember, go nice and light if you are sketching along with me. And then at the base of the glass here, so we've got our stem, we've got our base that sits on the table, um, and we are going to start with the top of the margarita glass. Down here at the bottom is a nice uh, half circle. Nice rounded half circle. Darken that so you can see it. And then we've got 
the top of the glass, which is usually much wider. So we're going to start with that brim. We're going to create an oval. Right, that's where the salt goes on a margarita. And then we are going to connect kind of uh, creating the top here. Now I am nitpicking mine. Mine is a little off center. That's okay. Don't be a nitpicker like me. This is just supposed to be a fun little, fun little practice sesh. Of course, if you were not a margarita drinker, you can make a wine glass. You can make, um, you know, anything. You can make a glass of Coca-Cola if that's what you like. But we are just playing. Yes, Wanda would love to win the watercolor giveaway. Um, little secret, I don't have that many entries. So everybody enter the watercolor giveaway. All right, so here is our glass. And I'm going to start with watercolor. Um, I should have pulled out my watercolor first. I pulled out my acrylic first. Um, basically, uh, we're, I'm going to do, I don't know, margaritas are green, right? So let's see, I'm going to get like a light green. I'm using liquid watercolor. Um, I've also got these pan watercolors and sometimes they come in a tube. It doesn't matter which watercolor that you get. You just want to um, wet your watercolor and then you are good to go. So I'm going to use this green for the lime and the margarita. Um, and then I'll probably need um, like a blue black. So um, I think I'm just going to use maybe a slate blue. And of course you can mix, you know, mix your colors however you want. You can use really whatever colors you like. And then I'm going to get black. There's going to be um, some gray with the um, glass and the salt. So um, let me see here. I'll do. Okay. So I've got a grass green, a yellow green, um, a slate blue, and a black. And if you're mixing your own colors, um, you can use one color, you know, grab a shade of green, mix a little yellow. That's how you're going to get a yellow green. And then this grass green is really just kind of a, just the secondary color green. And what I'm going to do is just put, now I'm using liquid watercolor. I'm going to put a drop of each on my palette here. And then uh, I'm going to add water to it. So if you're using a tube, you would do the same thing. Just put a little out and then add a little water to it. To get it going. I've got these little pipettes um, that I've had forever and they are handy for just this purpose. All right. All right, let's see what we can come up with. So I am going to start the, I keep looking at my margarita glass. I'm going to erase any of my extra lines and I'm going to start uh, adding in some color and we are going to do what we call wet on wet. And that is where um, we're going to wet the paper first and then we're going to tap in watercolor. So I'm just going to grab a nice medium sized brush. I'm going to dip it in my water and I'm going to create a second line here just under the brim because it wouldn't be filled all the way to the top, right? There'd be a little space. And I know you cannot see what I'm doing because this is clear water, but I am going to fill in, um, after I create this line right across, I'm gonna fill in this entire bottom of the glass here, all of this, just with a, a layer of water. Now you don't want it to be sopping and drippy, but you do want it to be wet. And what is going to happen is we're going to tap in 
some color and it's going to spread around and move. It's going to be really pretty. All right, so I am going to go into my yellow green here and then um, watch what happens when I tap it in. So it just is going to start moving and blending all on its own. So I'm going to fill up this bottom. Probably need a little more color here. And the longer that I let this sit, the longer it's going to move and blend. So just tap in some color, definitely leave some white area and let this watercolor, uh, what I call misbehave. We're going to let this misbehave and have a good old time in this glass. And move and blend. So I'm going to fill all this in. Tap in some darker color in areas. I'm going to wipe off my brush, dip it in the water, and now I'm going to tap in some water. And what this water is going to do is push some of this watercolor out. And it does take just a second for the effect um, to happen. Let me see if I can get it on camera. So when you tap in water, it just kind of pushes that color away and it's going to create some light areas. So what we want is areas of lighter color and darker color. And that just makes it a little more fun. And if it's not blending out enough, you know, you can always, always move it around and help it, encourage it to do what you want it to do. So that we call wet on wet. I don't like to over blend, but sometimes you do need to encourage it to go where you want it to go. So that is my step one here. What I'm going to do is take my goofy face off here and I'm going to make this screen just a little bigger. That way you can see all the details. All right, so that was step one. Step two, we're just going to add a little bit of color in the glass. Now, what I didn't mention is we're going to have a slice of lime. So uh, I'm just going to sketch that in uh, while this is drying a bit. And, you know, a, a, a lime slice is just a circle. So this is not going to be real complicated. We're just going to kind of sketch a circle over here. I went a little big with that one. Let me start over. <sighs> All right, so let's see. I don't want it to be quite as giant. All right, so there's where my lime is going to be. I'll come back and play with that in a bit. Um, but that's important because we need to see what parts we need to leave. All right, so I've got over here in this little section, I've got uh, my, my black, I added black and a touch of blue, and I really want to water this down, okay? I don't wanna use very much of this color. I want it to be um, a nice, uh, thin, thin color. Let me see if I can show you here on the napkin. So even that's a little dark. I really just want it to be barely there, okay? Um, and what I'm going to do is start adding shadows by touching some of this barely there black, um, which turns it to a nice shade of gray. And little by little, and I'm doing this on dry. This is called wet on dry. So I'm going to work here on the stem. I've got my wet watercolor paint on my dry paper. 
So I'm just kind of randomly uh, tapping in color, staying within this section of glass here, and I'm leaving white area. And I want variation of color, so some of it's a little lighter, some of it's a little darker. So I'm just adding some color in on that stem. Random. And then when I get to the base here, I'm going to kind of add in just some circular strokes of color here in the base. And this is just step one of the uh, shadowing here. Now what I'm gonna do is do the same thing up here on my rim. I am going to just kind of, and you're not gonna wanna touch your green, okay? So we've got this rim up here, this is the glass. I am just tapping in a little bit of color. If you touch your green, it's going to encourage the green to come up into that top of the glass. So I'm just gonna kind of go around my rim and tap in a little bit of this shadowy color. And this is wet on dry. And I will lift this up closer to the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So see my color is very thin. And you can see where I touched my green. See how it encouraged a little bit of that green to come up here. That's okay because I'm actually going to add some color in on that lime. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, and I like mistakes in watercolor. I can't lie. I like watercolor because it misbehaves and it creates all of those kind of whimsical little fun mistakes. And then down here, I just kind of tapped in some color on the stem and then down here at the bottom. And this, this section here, this margarita was wet on wet. This shadowing here was wet watercolor on dry paper. All right, now what I want to happen is I'm gonna let this and the stem dry a little bit. So I'm gonna start in on this lime and we are gonna build up the lime here. So I used a yellow green for my margarita. So you can see here, I'm gonna use a grass green for my lime. And I'm gonna go in with my darkest color and I am just gonna outline the edge here of the lime and that would be the rind or the peel. So this can be nice and dark. And the difference in the color here is not showing up all that well on camera, but this is definitely more of a grass green and my margarita is more of a yellow green. And then what we've got here in the center of a lime is we've got some triangular segments. So I'm gonna dip into some water and what I'm gonna do um, is I am going to find my center, which is probably right here in the corner. Now I've just got water on my brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a triangle and I'm gonna let my triangle touch the edge and what is going to happen is it's going to start pulling in this edge into the water, into my triangle. Then I'm going to leave a little space and I'm going to draw another triangle with water. I'm going to fill in the bottom with water and then I'm going to touch that edge at the top. And you can see it start to pull in color. And see how there's that nice white area? I left a space. So I don't want the triangles to touch each other because then it's just going to fill in completely. And so I'm going to do that all the way around. Leave a space, add a triangle, just with water, and touch that edge. And 
And what that's going to do is create those little triangular slices that we see in a line. Right, so we added in those triangular slices, and you can see the longer it sits, the more color it pulls down into that triangle. And by leaving that white space, we get the illusion of slices, and that's what we want. Okay, now while we were working on that, we've allowed some of this to dry. Um, because this was wet on wet, it's probably still wet. So I'm going to add just a little more detail to my uh, shadowing and glass here. Um, so I'm going to dip back into this blue gray. So I've got the same color that I worked with earlier. What, my dog, seriously. What I'm going to do is on the right side of my glass. Come here, Thomas. Because I'm just going to add a nice dark shadow right on the right. And excuse me for just a moment. I'm actually going to shut my door, my studio door here, so it gets nice and quiet. They always trick me because they are so quiet before I start. Okay. All right, back to our shadows. Sorry about that. These are my little stinkers. Okay, so we added a nice uh, second coat of the shadow here. And we're just using the same color, but when we layer upon layer, it's going to create a darker appearance. All right, so then I'm going to, on the left side here, right at the top, just add a little shadow. And then right here down the center, just add a little shadow there. So we've got the right side of the glass, the left side, underside here, and then just a little triangular shadow right there. And then down here at the bottom where the stem meets the base, I'm going to add a nice curved line. And then I'm going to create in uh, a line with some breaks. Maybe that curves in a little bit. But the idea here is just to have layers. Nice rounded shadow right here in the middle. And then over here on the right, I'm going to add a larger shadow, larger kind of triangular shadow. So we're just following the shape of that base. And then I can go over my outline. And you can see just by adding this second layer, it darkens and makes it look more like glass, right? And there's no right or wrong. Like I'm just adding shadows where I feel like they go. Um, so don't stress about it. Just play with it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to do the same up here at the top. What I'm going to do is really outline this rim in the back. And then up here in the front, I'm going to create kind of an uneven dashed line. We're going to put some salt on there, so that's not going to even be a big deal. I'm going to dip my paintbrush in water. So it's got 
um, a thinner version of what we just did. And I'm just gonna add a little more shadowing up here. Just tapping it in and I'm being random with it. I'm not thinking about it. So that was step two of our glass shadows. Now I'm using kind of a medium size round here. Um, I almost always use rounds for watercolor. Next, I'm gonna grab uh, just a thinner, thinner brush. And I'm gonna go back and add a little more detail into my lime. Now my lime is, at this point, it's a little wet and a little dry, and that's fine. Um, so I'm going to dip right into my grass green. Remember, I've got two greens. I've got my lime green and my grass green. So I'm going to dip into that grass green. And what I'm going to do is just add some thin lines at the top of each of these. And they're uneven length. Let me raise this up a little bit. So... Just some random lines and strokes up at the top of this lime here. And because it's a little wet, some of this is gonna blend out and that's okay. Where it's dry, you may, may get a nice thin, clean stroke. Where it's a little wet, it may blend out a little bit. That's what we want. That's what I want anyway. So I did that kind of around the top. Now I'm not gonna do much here in the middle but I am gonna add some of those lines down at the bottom. And then again, with my thin paintbrush, I'm just gonna really add another dark line right around the edge of my rind or my peel. We're just gonna darken that up a little bit. Now I do this in steps that way uh, you know, one step is drying while I move on to the next step. But what I'm going to do now is I really want uh, this to be nice and dry so I can add some fun detail. So I am going to zap this with a hair dryer. Um, or I'm sorry, this is a heat gun, but you can also use the hair dryer or just give it a few more minutes. But this way it speeds along the demo just a little bit. <clears throat> Um, I will give you a tip. If you're working on watercolor paper and you notice as you're drying it that it bends a little bit, sometimes you just need to dry the back and that'll help straighten it out. That bend is due to um, the paper drying uh, more on the front than on the back. So uh, that does help. All right, so this is mostly dry. Uh, now I'm gonna continue working with my smaller brush. Hey Rose, how are you? So glad you could hop on. I'm in a margarita mood. So I am making a margarita with watercolor and then I'm gonna make one with acrylic. Um, so I've got this nice thin brush and I'm gonna just continue working on the details. So again, I'm gonna dip into this really thin black mixture. Um, this looks really dark, but it's actually thinned down uh, fairly well. So what I'm going to do is just add a little more dark detail. And when you layer watercolor, it gets darker. So I'm going to add um, just some smaller curves and details up in this glass here. So... 
Um, I'm kind of being random with where I put these, but I just want some portions to be darker and that gives the illusion of a shadow. And this is not, you know, hyper-realistic. I would say this is more of an abstract margarita, so don't stress over it. Just play. But with shadows, you want areas that are lighter and darker. And that's what's going to give you this illusion of glass. And so I've got three different layers down here. So we've got a nice pale layer, and then we've got our medium tone, and then we add a third layer, which gives us a darker tone. Uh, so it's all about layering. Now up here at the top, I'm going to take the same color, and I want to add in some salt crystals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here at the top, and I'm just going to randomly kind of create little squares little marks this is my first layer of salt here and they don't need to be perfect we just want to randomly kind of add some on the brim here space them out differently All right, so there's my first layer of salt. I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna add, while I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit, I'm just gonna add another section of detail, just a few more lines with my grass green up here in the lime. Lines in my lime. And then again, this just creates another layer of detail. And this is dry because I uh, dried it with that heat gun. So these lines are not going to move and blend out. These are going to be nice and um, thin. All right, so I added my third layer of shadowing down here. I just tapped in some little salt dots up here, and then I added a layer of lines again in my lime. What I'm going to do is switch back to my larger brush. I'm going to dip right into this, maybe add a little water. And I'm going to come back and I'm just going to tap again all the way around my brim with this larger brush and just kind of move the salt all the way around. Just kind of tapping in. Again, it's abstract. I don't need to see every little salt crystal. It's just the appearance, right? So I'm pretty much finished. At this point, it's all just touch-ups and your own fun little accents. So I might come back in here and just wherever I feel like there needs to be more color, maybe I'll tap some color in.
maybe even adding a little bit of this yellow green into the lime, whatever you want to do. This is your painting. That is my quick and easy lime margarita. One thing I even like to do with watercolor um, is add fun little splashes. Splatters and splashes are kind of cool. They're a nice way to finish off. Just add a little background fun. So feel free to do whatever you like. I'm going to go ahead and dry this and then I'm going to show you what this looks like with acrylic. All right, so that's it. So some of the things I want to point out here, um, you can see where I added water and it kind of pushed, um, when we did the wet on wet, it pushed some of that color away and that just gives some variation. Um, down here at the bottom, the technique I used for the glass was just using um, nice, very, very thin shade of gray and then layering three layers on top and each layer, um, there's just a little less gray and that gives the appearance of glass. Uh, so those are the, the techniques that I kind of focused on for uh, the watercolor version of this. So what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and flip this over and I'm going to sketch my margarita glass again. This time maybe I'll do a strawberry margarita. Um, but totally up to you. Or you know what, let's even change, let's change it up a little bit. Let's do a mimosa. So I'm going to sketch my champagne glass here. I start at the top with, you can start at the top or the bottom. For this one, I, I wanted a long, a long shape here. You can make any kind of glass you want, but we're going to focus on uh, doing the same techniques with water, um, with acrylic as we did with the watercolor. So then I am going to just create the stem down at the bottom. And then of course the stem goes into the base. If you are sketching at home, remember sketch lightly. You don't want to see a lot of this. I'm going a little darker so that you can get the general shape. So we've got the stem, it just starts out a little wider, gets thinner. You've got just a large curved glass here at the top. And my shape's not perfect, but this is just kind of a fun little abstract session here. All right, so I used green, I did a lime margarita. I am going to pull out my acrylic colors. Um, so I'm gonna use, I got, uh, I have acrylic ink. So this is a nice thinned version of acrylic. This is Liquitex, this is a fantastic brand to use. Uh, there are some other brands available as well. I'm working on a mimosa. So I'm gonna have, um, I might even do a strawberry mimosa. I'm gonna have orange and yellow for my orange juice. I'm gonna add a little bit of Quinn Magenta um, for my strawberry. Actually, you know what? Let's draw a strawberry. We're gonna have, I'm gonna sketch in a strawberry. A strawberry here is just a nice triangular shape. And then of course we are not gonna see 
uh, the glass underneath. So I got my little strawberry. Of course, the strawberry has got a little bit coming out the top. All right, so the key to kind of making this strawberry um, is that this right here is we still want to see the band of the glass. That's kind of where the, uh, here is where the strawberry is on the outside, and then the strawberry kind of goes on the inside as well. But don't stress over it. We are just having fun. All right, so I'm going to get my paints ready. So I'm going to need a little bit of pink, not much, or that magenta. I'm going to need a little more orange and a little more yellow than I have magenta. And that's going to be the orange juice. And then, of course, I do need my black, and that I am going to thin down for my glass. And I've got a lot in here. So, where are you, black? Ay, ay, ay. What did I do with my black? Did I lose it? Here we go. All right, I'll use this brand. It's a different um, brand. This is a Dale Rowney, but it will work just as good. So I've got my black there. All right. Now I'm going to thin this just like I did with my watercolor, add water to it to make it a little more fluid. So I'm going to add quite a bit to my black because I want that to be nice and thin. Just a few drops for the rest of these because they are already pretty thin. And then step one, remember, was wet on wet. Yes, there's a fun little glass. Somebody, Samantha posted a little drink, a little mixed drink on, that would be fantastic on the beach. So again, I'm going to create a line up here where my drink stops in the glass, and then I am going to fill the bottom with water, a nice thin coat of water. You want to make sure that it's saturated but not drippy. So if you're using watercolor paper, it should absorb quite a bit of that. And again, with this process, uh, make your own decisions. You don't have to do exactly as I do. I'm doing kind of a strawberry mimosa here. You can do a mixed drink, you can do a strawberry margarita, you can do another lime margarita, whatever you want to do. All right, so I am going to do this wet on wet. This area is nice and wet. I think you can see the reflection there. And then first I'm going to tap in my yellow. Now this is acrylic, it's just thinned down so that it's going to behave a little bit like watercolor. So, you know, most orange juice is mostly yellow. And then we've got a bit of orange tone in there. So I'm just tapping in some orange. Your orange juice can be as orange or as yellow as you would like. And you will notice this acrylic does behave a little bit different. 
and then the watercolor. If you're doing both, you'll notice a bit of a difference. The process is the same, but your end result is going to be a little different, a little more fun. So you will have to blend it out a little more. But I really like to, I mean, as a mixed media artist, I really enjoy seeing how these different mediums can be used to create similar effects. So tapping in a little more orange. Now, you know, I wanted to go strawberry, so I'm going to tap in over here in this white portion. I'm going to add in a little bit of that Quinn magenta and just blend it into my drink. So at this point, I'm going to use back and forth strokes to kind of blend some of this, but I don't want it over blended because the beauty of wet on wet is letting that move and blend and have fun all on its own. So I'm going to leave that and then we are going to move into the shadows just like we did earlier. And I'm going to test my shadow shade. That is way too dark. You can see I tested it over here. That's way too dark. So I'm going to add just a little more water. That's still really dark. Let's see. There's a lot more pigment here in this acrylic than there was. There we go. Um, and the watercolor. So I had to thin my black quite a bit more. But again, I'm just going to have fun with these shapes. Just random shadow marks on and in the glass stem. And because I've thinned it, it's nice and transparent. As I get here down at the bottom, I want to create some curvy marks. And then we let that dry. And I do the same up here at the top. I'm going to go around my upper edge with my shadow color. And then just kind of random lines and marks. And this is all about layering. So while this wet on wet is blending out and this first layer of shadows is drying, I am going to add some color to my strawberry, just like I did with my lime. Um, except this time I am going to let this be a little wet on wet. So I am going to add some paint in my strawberry or I'm sorry, add some water. That's what I meant to say here in my strawberry and Again, I don't want it to be oversaturated, but I want it to allow my paint to move and blend. And I'm careful not to touch any of my shadow. You can kind of see that uh, reflection there. That's nice and wet. And I'm just going to go around the edge of my strawberry. You'll see it kind of blends in there. And as I add color inside, I'm going to just kind of dot dot in the color because I want it to be I want it to appear a little patchy um, because you know strawberries have all those divots and holes not not really holes but you know where the seed goes All right, so on your end, you're going to want to let your side dry. Uh, I'm going to use my heat gun to speed along the process so you can see what I'm up to.
And you'll notice my edge, well, maybe you can't see on camera, but my edge curled a little bit, so I'm just going to dry the back. That helps give the paper its shape back, but it will lay flat. Totally optional, of course. All right, then I'm going to add in a second layer, um, starting with the shadows. And so just adding these second layers is going to darken some parts. It's going to change the way we view the shadows. And it's really going to make it look like glass. And so I don't do quite as many. the same up at the top. I'm going to kind of focus on that rim. And then I can add more shadowing as well. Now here on my strawberry, I am going to dip into magenta. And this is dry now, so I'm going to kind of just tap in some rows of dots. And this will help give my strawberry the appearance of seeds. And some of these are going to touch and move and blend out, and I'm okay with that. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to add another layer of yellow over the top of this mimosa. And this is dry. And this is just going to kind of um, unify all that blending that happened. And the thing about the the main difference between acrylic and watercolor is that watercolor will continue to lift as you layer. Acrylic will not. So adding this yellow over the top um, is not going to ruin what's underneath when you're working with acrylic. Um, it would have blended and moved a little bit had I done that with watercolor. So sometimes it's just a matter of understanding the medium that you're working with. And I do need to add a stem and some leaves to that strawberry. So I'm just using some liquid green acrylic and I'm just going to add that in. I'm not going to add a whole lot of detail to that. And then my last step is just going to be a third layer of shadows. So even more sparing. Just little touches here and there. And the same up here. I don't have um, any salt on my rim, so I'm just going to kind of keep that outline nice and strong. And if you want to blend a little color out, you can do that. And then what I'm going to do with this strawberry here is I've got a gel pen and I am just going to add some little, little seeds. Of course, this was, you know, this is abstract. I'm just having fun. I'm just playing with it. 
So there's my strawberry mimosa. And that's all I've got for you guys today. So this needs to dry, but I will compare this acrylic with my watercolor. Both are different, equally beautiful. We followed similar steps. So I would love to see if you gave it a try. Definitely post. Um, this is uh, posted in all of my groups. You can post it in Mixed Media Crazy or Online Paint Night, or you can post it to your own profile and just tag me at Painted Cicada. Um, I would love to see what you create. That's my favorite part of being a presenter. So uh, thank you for joining me. Um, I do believe, let me see what my next demo is. Uh, my next demo will be Friday the 3rd, so keep an eye out. Um, you can always catch me live or catch me on the replay. Um, thanks so much, everybody. Have a great Friday and a great weekend, and I will see you soon. Happy creating.